We here with Lil Black, good. the CEO. Uh -huh. Yeah, my, and, and I got shot at my baby. My baby did my nails and she told me, Daddy, you cannot, so all right, there you go. I love you, baby, that's right, I'm proud, Daddy. But hey, where we at, where we at, uh, where we at? My neighborhood, yo. Libby Heights and Garrison, Libby Heights and Gorn Oak, I love it, all day, zone 17. Yeah, I mean, I even can say zone 15, because I ran around even at Park Heights, but if I gotta call home, we are literally on the block I grew up in, Main Avenue, two blocks down the street, 4306 Main Avenue, man. Now, I'm going to give you a little backstory of when I first met Lil Black. This was a while ago. This probably was like 2008. I was a pup. And I was supposed to be opening up for Shorty Low. I was bold. Yeah, you, remember, you probably remember that. This I'm is 2008. Oh, Where I think we club one at now. Hey, all right. Like hey. down there. Hey, I'm over time. Yep. Right, and we talking about 2008. So that's about like almost 12 years ago. And... Black always been the life. Black always been just black. Like, for real, he, he stands out in the crowd. Well, so, just let me know, like, because this is 12 years ago. Right. What what keeps you going? What keeps you little black, the CEO? Honestly, I, I mean, now, I, I flip it two ways. As far as what I do work-wise, on the mic and the clubs and all that, I just love what I do. Like, I'm a people person. I love having fun. I mean, I love me going through as much as I went through in my life. I feel like I know if I went through that, it's a lot of people that went through it. And I mean, it ain't, I'm a commodity right now. It's, it's what is it, a minority? minority. It's not too many black men my age running around still doing what I do. So I hold that high. I mean, so that's why. I, when I can get out here and talk to the kids, get out here and talk to these youngers, you know I mean? Half of them I know because I grew up with their person. It's a shame right now, it's maybe 20, 30% of people 50 and over that's still alive that actually grew up with me. So a lot of these kids, I know I've seen them grow up. So I look at it like, I didn't have per se a father. And I mean, for whatever reason I didn't, I had a single mother. Grew up in the house, the house right down the street, 14 women from the ages of newborn to fit. I mean, they was my role models. Everybody be asking me how I get my style, my sister. I got it with my sister. I ain't gonna get her that crap. I just evolved with it. But I mean, typical, like I said, um, I never had that role model. So you know in every black family, well I don't say every black family, but in every family that's broken, when it was time for me to come off the porch, I mean, I did the same thing everybody else did. The only difference was, I went to prison when I was young, I ain't come home until I'm adult. That's what a lot of people don't understand, that's why a lot of people think that, oh, it's just the radio black, because that was what I did for the last 16 years. 17, actually, now. But, well, well let's, let's break that down. Break down some of your titles, like like what you really be doing in the city. Break it down for them. Actually, yo, that's, that's a question I still ain't figured out, y'all. I ain't gonna lie. Like, if I had to put a title on what I do, it's not really no title, it's just black. Like, I, cause all right, if you had to put a title on it, okay, I do host parties. I do host events, you know what I mean? I do do radio. I do do community stuff. I do, but that's just, it's like black is the, when you do like the permit, black is the, the, the LLC and everything else is the corporations under it. So I can't say for one. Well, no, I can't say, if, if I had to say what I do, I make people happy. And the reason why I do that because I've been through real shit, man. Like, like I didn't, people don't understand the backstory of Little Black. Before I became a happy go lucky Little Black, I was Dr. Jekyll. Everybody know I was a little terror running around this city. No, I wasn't no tough Tony and all that. But yeah, I was running around raising hell. I mean, and me going to prison, facing the death penalty, facing all uh, murder charges, the carjacking, all that, getting kidnapped, all that. When I came home and then went back. I never forget it. I came home, tried to jump back out there, and the judge out Towson told me, if I see you again, you know what's gonna happen. So after that, I was done. I told God, you ain't gotta bust my head no more, I see the blood. So I made the choice that you know what? Considering how far to the top I made when I was in the streets, and what much more can you really see? So black, maybe, and, and I'm a big person, because I was always raised in religion, wherever it would be. I got people in each denomination in my, my family. Whether it's the nation, 
I'm more signs. I'm, I was in the nation, a couple other things, traveling man and some more stuff. But it gave me that 360 degree knowledge of I have a real, real relationship with God. So it's like, how can I put it, y'all? I made God a promise when I came from up under the death penalty, I would never do it again. Even though I, I dropped the ball, but after that, I never went back. From then on, it was straight, and I was always a hustler. I always had a good, a good mouthpiece on the pause, but outside that, I ain't, people don't understand, yo, there is no right way to do wrong. Some people learn that in their 70s, 80s, after they've been in jail all their life, or they got shot, beat up, or whatever the consequences of whatever it was doing me. I was blessed enough to learn when I went to prison for all that death penalty stuff, there is no right way to do wrong. I used to see dudes coming home three, four times. I'm still sitting there waiting on the same goddamn job. So it's like it, he don't necessarily have to lock the door on the box, but if he make it dark enough for you to see what he needs, you see. And I saw it. You know what I mean? So like, like now, there's nothing young boys always can tell me you doing the streets that's going to amaze me. Been there, done that, buddy. What you want to amaze me? Make it to my age and still be doing what you're doing. Now, now you know it's a lot of kids our, our color, just like us, uh -huh. that's that's taking that same route. You know that, that that you've been through. Like, what advice can you give them as far as where they can have a mind frame at to stay away from them same potholes that a lot of us fall into? My uncle told me before he died, God rest his soul. My uncle Dino. I can respect any decision as long as it's not a stupid. Weigh your pros and cons. Cause I think one thing I not in a lot of people will take this a certain way. I don't tell nobody how to survive. Cause right now in our city, everybody knows a drum. I mean, and that's the one of the biggest problems. We've been surviving so long, we don't know how to live no more. But if that's how you surviving, just remember it was meant to visit, not live. That's when people get it twisted. And any hustle, whether it be streets, hustling, socks, anything, if it's not legal, it was not meant for you to, it was meant for you to get yourself to a better situation. I don't, I don't encourage that because, like me now, I'm tired of rappers, only because for our city, nobody, and I don't say nobody, a lot of people don't have that push to start their own way. Everybody's following the way, which dilutes it for the person that started. So my thing is, you know what I mean, find your lane and go after it. Because for me, I'm going to get it. I mean, and that's why I said, take for you to go do some real shit, bro, to put that fire behind you. Because as long as you got those memories of what you went through, you ain't going to never go. But that's why I can walk around. If I feel like coming out with my nails painted because my daughter did them and I love them and I'm proud of that, or if I want to come out with pink pants, whatever, I earned the right to have this tattoo on my face. I mean, I, and a lot of people say, well, black, why do you do what you do? Because somebody needed to do it, y'all. Like, I think about it, if, if, if you had that, that male role model or not even that real motor period, we would have did a lot of the stuff they did. Not saying that I regret it because it made me know who I was, but a lot of people might not make it through all them trials and tribulations I went through. So if I can jump out there and help somebody, yeah, I don't care. My child, and I just had this conversation the other day, and yeah, I mean, I'll put it out there because everybody know I don't lie. I adopted a set of twins. Everybody know that. I ain't putting them out there because I don't need everybody to know that. People always saying, "Black, why you always putting stuff on?" You know why? Because as long as it's a child in this fucking city that needs someone to look up to and that they can depend on that really loves them, I'm gonna be there. Because that's what I never had. Now, granted, I had mommy, grandma, and all them, but that was in the house. You need somebody on these streets that you can call that. Hey, and kids do it all day. That's why I get my phone number out to everybody. And I know they get 443-248-6442. Just don't be calling me to get you no damn parties. Call me if you really need me. I mean, but like I tell the kids when we crash the schools, y'all, because People don't understand, and I don't know, maybe it's just God plight why I connect with it so much, but people don't understand, you got to get down on their level to understand where they're coming from. I mean, and me, maybe it's because when I left the streets, I was a child, so maybe my mentality is a little bit more still stuck there, because I can admit I'm growing now, because when I left the streets, I was a kid, when I came back, I was a adult. 
And maybe that's why I helped him to be with them. But I relate with him. Because y'all ain't out here seeing the stuff they go through, man. And even without me being involved in a lot of it, it's just that I'm out here, so I see it. I get it. I can walk in a building, and just because I'm tatted up and everything, I have people turn their face up and it's like, I name. Until the person they respect come over and say, hey, Black, how you doing? Black man, so that's why I'm out here. Because I always been the underdog, so no matter wherever is an underdog or somebody that need help, I'm going to be there. Because I know that feel. I'm Jerry. I pretty much run the Liberty Rec and Tech Center. Um, the manager here, and Keith is uh, my assistant. Uh, we pretty much just try to keep the building as open as much as we can to provide a service for the community. Black has been great. Whenever we call on him, he always shows up. We just did a big annual basketball thing. Black shows up. Whenever we call on him, this guy's been great. He's a great piece at helping us the village to raise our community and, and keep a close watch on those that want to be watched and help as much as we can. I mean, I don't know what we're he doing without village a guy that like used to beat me up when I was living, staying in line. This oh. guy right here, he's been with me a, the whole way. You know, we both work outside of here, but we we here. You see that motto, let's get That's it. what it takes. And we here every day, day in, day out. You call on us, this is our village, and we're here to do our job. Call on us as much as you can because we're here to provide service. We're in the business, I'm not going to hold you up, but changing and saving lives. That's what we do, all three of us here. And if we can't do that, why are we here? My name is Keith. I'm here for the youth. They're a little older than me, so the younger kids come to me since they're a little closer to my age. So I give back to what these guys right here gave back to me, so I pass it on to them. Try to be a mentor to the young kids that's coming up under me. That's where it's at.